no water left and I've still got five miles to go. Oh. Four miles done. Now for some water. Mm. Do you forget to think about water before, during and after your run? And have you ever wondered how dehydration might actually be affecting your running performance? I'm Rick and today with Anna we're going to be talking all about dehydration. What causes it, how it affects performance and how you can avoid it. Yep, and stay tuned because we've even got a science experiment for you to demonstrate. First off though, please do hit subscribe and tap the bell icon so you get notified when we upload new videos all about running, which we do every week. Dehydration is something that a lot of people could be living with without actually realizing and seeing the impact that it can have on your running. In a study in 1998 of 3,000 Americans, it was found that 75% of them were actually chronically dehydrated without realizing, and that's because of the imbalance between their caffeine and sodium intake compared to their fluid intake. So before we jump into what dehydration is, we thought we'd give you a bit of a visual representation of what it is and what it can do. Yep, Anna and I have prepared a little science experiment for you. We've each got a potato, cut it in half and fill the bowl with water. So I'm gonna put my half of the potato cut side down into some water and leave it for an hour. And I'm gonna do the same, but before I put the potato in the water, I'm gonna add two tablespoons of salt to the water. Stay tuned to the end of the video to see the results. So what leads to dehydration and what effect does dehydration have on your body? Well, when you exercise, you lose fluid in two different ways. One, through the moisture that you breathe out and two, through sweat. Exercise makes our body temperature increase. Our bodies then regulate temperature through something called cutaneous vasodilation. Now this is a process where heated blood is sent to the skin cells where heat can more easily be released into the atmosphere. This is also helped by the cooling effect of sweat evaporating. So how does dehydration come into this process? Well, if you have less fluids in your body, it can result in your blood becoming thicker and more viscous. This reduces the amount of blood being pumped around our body and can put an extra strain on our cardiovascular system, especially during exercise. Our heart rate then increases to try and pump more blood around the body to retain a good amount of blood flow to our muscles and vital organs during exercise. As this is all occurring, there's less blood flow to our skin, meaning our temperature continues to increase without being able to cool down, and this can lead to heat stroke or potentially even more life-threatening conditions. So hydration is key in order to stay healthy and comfortable while out on a run. We're going to talk about dehydration and running performance, but it's definitely important to also mention the possibility of overhydrating, which can be dangerous, leading to something called hyponatremia. There's no one size fits all approach and drinking as much as you can hold is definitely not sensible. So how can dehydration affect our running? We know that severe cases can cause serious health implications, but can less serious instances of dehydration affect how well we run? Short answer, yes they can. Studies have found that even low levels of dehydration can have an effect on your running performance. Previous research has found that a loss of body weight of just 2%, so that's one kilogram for somebody who weighs 50 kilograms, can increase the rate of perceived effort. So in other words, how hard it felt to run at the same pace. Research also found that a 2% loss of body weight due to dehydration can reduce performance by 10 to 20%. The issue with this research is that it was conducted in conditions that don't quite match real life sporting conditions. So using saunas or diuretics to lead to dehydration rather than physical activity. So these exact statistics may not be the case for all runners, but what it does show is that dehydration can have a negative impact on our running performance, and therefore staying on top of our hydration can actually produce 
better results. So what could dehydration look like on a run? Well, it could mean that your heart rate is a lot higher than normal for your easy pace runs, or that your perceived exertion is a lot higher than normal. This is why it's important to monitor your training stats like heart rate and perceived exertion, so you can spot those signs of dehydration early. You might be thinking, well, why don't I just drink when I feel thirsty? And previous research had suggested that exercise actually suppressed our thirst. And so at the point of feeling thirsty, it's actually too late and you're already dehydrated. However, more recent research has found that actually it can be an appropriate strategy to drink to thirst. Just bear that in mind though when planning ahead for runs because although you might not feel thirsty when you head out the door, it might be the case that you get halfway around your route, feel like you need a drink and you haven't taken any water or electrolytes with you to rehydrate. In most sporting activities, there are two things that can affect our performance. The first is a reduction in carbohydrates and the second is a reduction in fluids. These two factors can lead to fatigue and a reduction in performance. So it's important to make sure that your carbohydrate and fluid levels are at an optimum level to maximize performance. This is where it can get a bit tricky though, because there isn't a one size fits all answer to staying hydrated. The best way to stay on top of it is to make sure you're keeping hydrated throughout the day and monitor your environment as well. Hot and humid conditions are gonna increase your body temperature so that you sweat more, leading to more fluid reduction than normal. What you wear on a run will impact your body temperature and that's why a lot of sportswear will be made from a moisture wicking material so it takes sweat away from your body to help keep you cool on the run. Wearing lots of layers and getting too hot whilst you're out running will end up in an increase in lost fluid mostly through sweat. You might want to think about how you rehydrate as well. As we said before, you lose carbohydrates and fluids, but you also lose sodium when you exercise as well. And that's why sweat tastes so salty. So a good way to rehydrate would be to take some electrolytes either before, during, or after you run. And if you want more tips on electrolytes and the kinds of products that are out there to help rehydrate you, make sure you check out our video all about it. So it's time to take a look at our potatoes. Well, mine's a bit soggy, but it looks pretty much how it did when I put it in there. Mine's definitely seen better days. Now it's all shriveled up, and that's because the excess salt acts as a dehydrator and draws water out of the potato. Now we consume a lot of dehydrators in day-to-day -day life. Things like caffeine, alcohol, and foods high in sodium can all lead to dehydration. This might be a bit confusing when we say that electrolyte drinks contain salts to replace those lost from sweat, but the important thing here is balance. In the case of the potato, too much. So make sure when you're planning your weekly runs, you also consider your fluid intake as well. And if you're bad at remembering to drink water, there are plenty of hacks out there to help you. For example, you can get water bottles with lines that go up that tell you to drink a certain amount by a certain time of day. You can track your fluid intake on apps and on your smartwatch as well. You can set reminders to buzz to remind you to drink. And don't forget the old favorite, the wee test. So you can look at the color of your wee to see how hydrated you are. You're aiming for a pale straw color. Anything darker than that, you need to drink a bit more water. Experiment with different ways to hydrate as well as what you use to hydrate. So whether that be plain water or electrolyte drinks and sports supplements. And if you think you might be dehydrated, these are the symptoms that you need to be looking out for. So feeling thirsty, dark yellow and strong smelling pee, feeling dizzy or lightheaded, feeling tired, a dry mouth, lips and eyes, and peeing little. So fewer than four times a day. So hopefully that's answered all of your questions about dehydration. Got any other tips or any other questions? Leave them in the comments below and we will get back to you. And we'll see you next time on The Running Channel.